Balance and World of Warcraft. Well, this is a really good start. It's showing a warrior in Classic and a Demon Hunter in BFA. All right, well, we've got a lot to look forward to here. It's, yeah, a real, real short video. Rogues are... Why a paladin never beat a hunter? Why paladins will get nerfed? Give warriors a chance versus druids? War of Warcraft will be the worst game ever. True, dude. So that guy was right. Ah, Pizza bounce. Square, thanks for the five subs. Appreciate it. In a perfect that. world, everything is completely even with each other. Yeah. Paladins are just as good as shamans. No. Yeah, yeah. The alliance racials are perfectly even with the hordes, uh -huh. and both factions are on an equal footing. And That's what... the only variable in performance Ooh. is between the keyboard and the computer chair. Nope. It's perfect balance. And in the world of RPGs, it in my opinion, existed. it's also bad game design. It is. And in this video, I'm going to share my argument why. I think balance in the game, it's like, here's the thing, is you want to give people their time in the sun, and like you want to rotate it around where like some classes are really good, but you'd never want to have like the class that's always good. Like that's what sucks, is like whenever you just have the class, it's just constantly fucking OP. Perfect balance is boring though. Uh, you're, you're definitely right about that. And like swapping things around and like every season there's like new good comps and classes that are a little bit better off and different things. Like I think that makes it more interesting. The beginning. Even before the game's launch in 2004, players rushed to the forums with tears streaming down their face. God damn it, Blizzard. The reason I just yep. died in PvP isn't because I suck. It's, it's because the game's my class fault. sucks. Yeah, that's right. Man, what's the warrior to do against a cross Oh, fuck you. Ready? Stop Stop it. Stop, no. Why is a class that you can play with a garage door opener soloing me with ease? It is true. I mean, it, it, it's fucking, it's fucking true. Like... I just, I, also, nerf that's shamans. That's sad. Post after post after post. Yeah, shamans Apparently, are stupid. every class is incredibly weak and also incredibly overpowered. Absolutely. Except, Except warriors. Except for what I'm playing, of course. Yes. No one understands the depth of knowledge and yes. skill it takes to yes. play my class at my true. level. Very true. So true. I, mean, I put so much time and effort into building my character. Uh-huh. And this is where the main argument of this video will be based around. Yep. RPGs since their birth are built around two major features Ooh. story and character development. Is this secret Focusing mana? more on the latter here. Yeah, Leveling, talents, skills, and gear. Looks These are terms like that are Final synonymous with the genre. Okay. And the longer you play, the stronger you become. There it is. If dude. you forsake this, you forsake the RPG genre as yeah. a whole. Now I will be comparing current <laughs> World of Warcraft to <laughs> Oh yeah, he says that and then he just puts the fucking the fucking picture of Shadow Ed's like right there. It's right there in front. Oh my god. Classic a lot here. Not only because that's what the channel is focused on, yeah. but also I think they're just really good examples in general. For exhibit A, we have classic. Yeah. Balance is seldom found in both PvE and PvP. That's right. And is pretty much the Wild West. It certainly Warriors is. Warriors are the best tanks. Yes, they are. Priests are the best healers. Warriors and are the in best PvP, DPS. you'll charge into a fight and die faster than you can save shamans classic yeah. is a perfect example of anarchy in terms of balance and current is the exact opposite you know those overprotected parents that have bubble wrap on every square inch of their oh, home those because are the their absorb kids shields. keep running into walls yeah current is the perfect example of breastfeeding your 30 year old child okay that was nasty i apologize both have their flaws and strengths of course and in an okay so Retail WoW, the problem is, like, Retail WoW isn't balanced either. Like, that's what I think a lot of people don't understand. It's not balanced either, but because you can't just out-gear the imbalances, it feels worse. So, like, for example, if you're a warrior and you go up against, like, a T1 mage or, like, a blue-geared mage and you've got full fucking 2.5, you're going to kill him because he's going to run out of mana before you die. So you're going to you're going to still win. So whenever you have like the fucking scaling shit, 
you don't have that situation where you win fights that you should lose because you just completely outgear the person. So like you're kind of set in like your destiny. It's like your destiny is to lose to a death knight. And it doesn't matter how much gear you get or anything, because of PvP scaling, you will always lose to a death knight. That's it. Effort of constructiveness. I yeah. want to first list off the good sides for both. All right. Oh, look at those numbers, dude. Look at those for numbers, classic, dude. It's the definition of let the kids play. These yeah. classes have these abilities, these strengths, and these weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And the players will obviously find what works and what doesn't. Of course they in do. In regards to PvP, it's more of a rock, paper, scissors style. It certainly certain is. certain classes have clear advantages over others. Mages counter oh, warriors. Oh, fuck you. Why well, have to show mages, that? And hunters counter warlocks. Yeah. In 1 vs 1 PvP, it's a complete mess. Yep. But in group objective-oriented PvP, it creates an aspect of strategy of forming an optimal team composition. Yeah. Druids are, of course, the best blade so. carriers. And rogues and hunters are great defenders, mm -hmm. paladins good stallers. Makes sense. You're rewarded and punished intensely for building teams certain ways, because all of these classes have their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty true. I mean, like, overall, I don't think it's really as open as you might believe. I think that a lot of times you kind of have, like, that, that optimum comp that you want to go with, and... I think the lack of a competitive scene in Classic is what gives people the illusion that there are a lot of comps that you can go with. But I think that whenever you actually get into like a very, com if you had a very competitive, if you had something that had the same level of competition that like, let's say the MDI has, I think you'd see a lot of the same comps coming, uh, you know, over and over and over, even in Classic. A and then as soon as you saw that, then you'd see people in game trying to emulate that because they feel like that's the best comp in the game. Uh, that that's really what it is. And not to stick on PvP here too much. In PvE as well, if you're the only one who can provide this buff, or can yeah. do res, or if you're the best tanking class, that's you're me. filling a niche, By the way, and that's, it feels that's good. It's yeah. not without its downsides, as we'll discuss, but there are some positive Ooh. things to be drawn from it. But of course, that's these classes sword. have changed substantially over the past 15 years. It certainly has. And today, that gap of balance has been narrowed. Uh, now, yeah, many I'd classes so. have some sort of speed boost that makes them decent flag carriers, and most classes are capable of stalling because everyone has a big defensive oh, cooldown. Dude, everyone it. is much more adaptable stop and versatile, it. especially with the ease of changing specs and talents on the fly, and that gear adapting with you. I think so many classes now in retail, like, I don't like defensives in the game. I know that might sound weird, but I don't like really like a lot of defensives. Like, for example, I was talking the other day, and I thought that, that like, dispersion shouldn't heal you. Like, it, it should just make you, like, not take a lot of damage. Like, I don't like how in Rage Regeneration not only stops you from, uh, like, not only allows you to heal a lot from your Bloodthirst, but also on top of that, it gives you a damage reduction. Like, it's both of them at the same time. And I feel like that's what really kind of sucks about, like, defensives, is that you have, like, these defensives that's compound on each other, and they're effectively immunities. Like, I think some classes should have immunities, but... At this point in the game, it feels like every class has effectively an immunity. Like, not only are you taking 30% less damage, but you're also healing for 40% of your health every three seconds. So it's like, how, how the fuck do you deal with that? It's, it's impossible, right? Uh, typical warrior man? Well, no, I'm saying, like, warrior with, like, die by the sword or something like that. Like, I don't think die by the sword. I, die by the sword is, like, kind of more, it's more nuanced because arms doesn't really have that much defensive in general. Uh, but I don't think they should have defensive stance. I hate how you just have defensive stance and you just sit in defensive stance. That's so boring to me. I, I, I hate that. Everything is much more flexible and convenient. No longer do you have to rely on only warriors to tank. Yeah. And priests are no it's longer the best healers by far for PvE, and so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah. Yeah. The balance in classic versus the balance in current are complete polar opposites. That's about which right. Which is why they're such good examples. Ultimately, it's mm -hmm. preference of what you like more. Of course, at first glance, most people will likely choose balance over imbalance. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it sounds straightforward enough. Yeah, I, but I in think my that's, opinion, that's it's logically more complicated what people would go and for. To lose importance certain aspects that make RPG special. If you take away these things that mm -hmm. make the class special by giving it to everyone, like heroism or battle res or buffs, or every healer is pretty good at AoE healing, it makes the classes that excelled at these roles or held these abilities less unique. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. 
Uh, I think that, like, really, like, for example, I always looked at, like, healing, where it's, like, paladins were, like, the god mode single target healers. Druids were, like, the god mode heal over time people. Uh, shamans were, like, the god mode, uh, like, AoE healers. And then priests were, like, the god mode uh, absorbs, right? So, like, they made sure that, like, damage didn't happen. And they also had really strong heals. So, like, I, I feel like every class was supposed to have, like, its own thing that they were really good at. And, and like, a, uh, we call I guess, like, a monk kind of does, like, what paladins do now. Right, which is like kind of unfortunate. And, and like now, like for tanks, for example, like warriors were the god mode physical mitigation class. Uh, paladins were the god mode damage class for, for tanks. Uh, druids were the god mode uh, like physical damage or high intake damage. Like, so a big like cast because druids had a high health pool. DKs were the god mode magic mitigation class. And so it just felt good. Like, if you were going to do Sartharian three, three Drakes, bro, you want to bring a fucking Guardian Druid or you want to bring a DK because Warriors don't have the health pool to deal with it and they don't have three different magic immunities. Like, that is one of the coolest fucking things, man. Dodge and HP gods? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Price for making the game competitive? Well, it, it, well, it did make the game competitive because you'd use different tools for different situations and you could bring in different people and other people could play off specs and just spec over to that instead for the raid. There were no guardians back then? Uh, no, I, I remember very clearly there were a, a good amount of guardian druids at level 80. Yeah. Uh, demon hunters are the best solo gods? Yeah, demon hunters... Uh, I feel like demon hunters don't really have like a place because it was like way after uh, they had like that meta. In this case, it's done mainly to make forming raids easier. Back yeah. in BC, you needed that shaman because you needed heroism. Fuck yeah. And if your shaman wasn't online, well, you're screwed. You're mad. But again, on the flip side, one can make the argument that forming oh, a proper composition and recruiting yeah. can also be considered a skill. Obviously, uh... it can get out of hand, and you don't want it to be a situation <laughs> where you stack 90% of the same class. But it's Yeah, I mean, like, obviously this is what's going to happen. Like, here's what's funny about it is like you can look at retail wow and you can say oh wow classes are unbalanced but look at the classic wow fucking speed clear like i'm just gonna pull this up real quick okay i i don't want to make too much of a uh, of a derail here but um bwl fastest clear like look at this real quick look at this comp look uh, look at all the warriors like half the whole raid is warriors that's it the druid's just there for the fucking buff so it's the kind of the same thing, man. And uh, how it should be? Yeah, of course. Like, this would be fine if they were all warriors. Still a legitimate tactical element that I think is diminished when you start creating these items that give Hallmark class abilities to everyone. Yep. Or every class being adaptable to any circumstance. I think they really did that. I think that the abilities being kind of... They started homogenizing. I, started, I think it started happening in Cataclysm. Like, in, in, in Wrath... I think classes were complete. And then in Cataclysm, Blizzard said, okay, well, we're going to give warriors the paladin thing. And we're going to give paladins the warrior thing. And we're going to give mages the warlock thing. And, and, like, that's what I really didn't like. And it felt like each class at that point was just beginning to be more homogenized. Uh, I, I didn't like that at all. A little P PvP, dude. A little bit of PvP, we're gonna do that in just a minute. Dude, Another great wait. example is the PvP skilling in current. Oh no. Now, I don't pretend by any means to be an expert in anything PvP related in no. current. Cataclysm was really <coughs> the last expansion where I enjoyed it personally. Yeah. But it's nearly unrecognizable today. When you zone in, your stats are skilled differently, and you don't even do the yep. damage that you think you're dealing. Alright, wait, watch this again. Ready, chat? 73,000 hit points? This is so cute, dude. I hit him for 189k, he doesn't die. See, like. I, I kind of, you know, you want to hear like something that I feel is like really kind of meta is that doing reaping flames in BGs and being able to calculate somebody's item level based off of their total effective health and then mathematically decide based off of that total amount of health, how much health they need to have in order for you to kill them with reaping flames is actually kind of a cool meta. But just because it's a cool meta doesn't mean that it should be a cool meta. That should not fucking happen. I should be able to just look at their health and see my Reaping Flames is 200k damage. They've got 190k. They're fucking dead. Like, it should just be that simple. I, I don't know, man. Some hit points. What? Look at that. I hit him for 189k. He doesn't die. So stupid. Like, literally cut in, in an half. In to balance things out, 
If you're a higher eye level player, your damage is actually scaled down. What a cock if you're of a game! A lower eye level player. What for an example, absolute you hit cock the lower of a game. Person for fifty thousand, he'll take twenty-five thousand on his screen. Yeah. You're still stronger, but overall that gap is shortened. It's done to balance the game because it's just not fair for the fresh player. Except that it yeah. is fair. It's the very definition of the word fair, in fact, that the player who spends more time in the game should have an overwhelming advantage to a character who just hit the max level. It's un. I'm gonna. Oh, let's listen to that one more. I want to listen to that again. I I, I want to hear that again. Should have an overwhelming advantage oh, 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 to a fair, in fact. Except that it is fun to balance the game because it's just not fair for the fresh player. Fuck him. Except that it is fair. True. It's the very definition so of the true. word fair, in fact, that there the player is. who spends more time in the game should have an overwhelming advantage to a character who just hit the max level. It's unfair to artificially shorten this gap for the sake of balance. It's anti- That's right. Of course. And like, here's the thing. Is like, at a certain point, it becomes ridiculous. Like with corruptions and like all the other like essences, etc. I think that you should have to spend a lot of time to be really good and really geared. But you should only have to spend that time on one character. And after you do that on one character, all of the secondary progression systems at max level should be more, more or less account wide. Like think about how much better the game would be if you had corruptions available to all of your classes based off of how many you've gotten on your main. Think about how much better it would be if you would be able to just use all of your essences on all of your characters. Like it would just be universally fucking better. Like, I, I, would, I would play the game more. That's the ultimate outcome, is like, I would play the game a lot more. Do you really think that I wouldn't roll a fucking Warlock and drop these, like, massive Chaos Bolts on people? Fuck no, man. I would love to do that. That's awesome. I, 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 I get excited just thinking about it. But am I going to spend four days, ten days, farming out visions for that? Fuck no. Of course not. I, I, I just, I don't understand it at all. Like, if they had made... Dude, corruptions are so fucking fun, man. And you only get to experience them on one character. Like, like you see another class, like Vinruki, on like a full mastery fire mage, just like deleting something with like a 300k burst? That's fucking awesome. Uh, that's really, really cool. But like, the amount of investment that you have to do that on, it's like doing that all over again on another character? Fuck that, man. Like, it's unnecessary. It's completely unnecessary. You can't farm out for an alt at all? Yeah, I mean, like, the alt shit really killed this expansion, man. It really did. I hope Blizzard sees that. I think they do, though. Uh, I, yeah, I think that they, I think they definitely do. Competitive and its anti-character progression and the genre that's centered yeah. around character progression. Giving the Detroit Lions a 50-point handicap oh. every game doesn't make things fair. Oh, no. If you're a fresh max level and you yeah. sign into an arena and expect anything other being made to be somebody's girlfriend, the problem Ooh. is with you and not the game. Yeah, exactly. It's so indirect and micromanaged. You do arena and your stats are scaled all over the place. And trinket effects are nerfed, trade effects are nerfed, abilities deal more. Or they had to nerf the traits, to be realistic. I mean, the, the thing is that... In order for the traits to feel really good in PvE, they have to nerf them in PvP. Like, they were just like Test of Might or something like that. Imagine having full strength Test of Might in, in, in Arena. Like, you're just going to one-shot somebody with a slam. Which does actually sound pretty cool. But uh, it's not really going to work. Uh, that, 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 that is a problem. Less damage. Nothing is what it seems. Yeah. You're not even dealing the damage you think you're dealing. No. Let me it's ask all you a, a simple question. What happened to building and gearing your character? And then zoning in with all of your correct stats, and when you deal 100 damage, the enemy takes 100 damage. They What's overthought it. That's what happened. Is they just completely overthought the entire situation. They, they overthink everything, and they try to like overdesign things whenever people just want a simple game. Like look at Classic WoW for example. I mean the game is still very successful. I mean they just turned off layering. There's like hundreds of thousands of people to play the game, and like why is that? It's because the game is simple and it's fair. In, in a lot of ways and I don't understand how Blizzard doesn't see that uh, I think that they do now now that Classic WoW is out and they have like that parallel the juxtaposition I, I think they see it but it's taken so long it's the next expansion every time you use an ability you have to make a customer service ticket and ask if it's okay yep 
The best way to describe PvP in Curran is it's one of those Mad Cats controllers with 10 extra buttons and joysticks. Mm -hmm. Half of them stick, the joystick has you permanently coasting to the left, and this yep. is a piece of crap your friend hands to you when you're over at their house. It's like, why can't I use that controller? Because screw you, that's why. Look at all the great features this one has. Well, yeah, exactly. You get to, yeah, you, you, you have like somebody come over and you make them use the busted ass Mad Cats controller that your little brother smeared peanut butter over like eight different times. And like, meanwhile, you get to use like the baseline fucking, you know, actual like box controller. That's what it is, man. The loot. The fucking loot, man. As I mentioned, loot is a huge where's part my, of character my, development and balance. Pet? I touched on this in my old BFA review, but I still think it's worth exploring more because I think it's one of the biggest issues with the current game, and it's not really talked about too much. The loot in current is the perfect example of when balance and homogenization is taken way, way too far. What's this piece? Main stat? Stamina? Secondary 1? Secondary 2? What about this one? Main stat, stamina, second. Is this stupid for me to say that I actually liked it whenever gear didn't have stamina on it? I thought that was really cool that you had like certain items that didn't fucking have stamina on it. Secondary one, secondary two. This good server's going crazy. And this one. I'll figure it main out. Main stat, stamina, secondary yeah. one, secondary two. World quests, dungeons, raids, Exciting. warfronts, PvP, wow. invasions, caches, oh. emissaries. Oh. It doesn't matter. Main stat, stamina, secondary wow. one, secondary two. Crazy. On every single piece. I swear, and the closest thing we have to George Orwell's 1984 is the loot system in current World of Warcraft. <laughs> it's almost as depressing as my voice. Oh my god. One of the god. things I like with Classic and just RPGs in general is the variety in loot. Some yeah. of it sucks, some of it's okay, and some of it is, oh my god, I will sacrifice my left testicle for this. Yeah. The one thing they all share in common, though, is that... So you're saying that McConnell... So you're saying that, uh, you know, maybe McConnell doesn't, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know. They're unique. Each piece is different from the last. Uh-huh. How so? Well, there are way more stats, first off. Mm -hmm. You have hit, crit, spirit, weapon skill, spell penetration, resistances, plus damage, plus healing, thorns. <clears throat> To your sets. Oh, that was more. good. That was, a good that was a good of part of the game. Homogenization. Different weapon types matter because of weapon skill, racials, and talents. And the speeds can be different, which is very important. The slower the better because ability damage is usually based around weapon damage. Yeah. And ultimately, with the way that stats are allocated, I need there to get are good that items sword. and there are bad items. There sure are. are garbage for PvE and amazing in Ooh. PvP. These two items drop from the same raid. One is complete garbage, and the other one you use for the rest of the game. It's unbalanced. I have a friend named Los, who I get into uh -huh. nerd debates between current and classic all the time, and I had a good gotcha moment with him. What is that? He played the original back in 04 to 07, okay. and he was one of the officers in my guild. He played a rogue and sticked with the game pretty steadily over Makes the years, sense. playing most expansions a good bit. That's a good boy. And when classic came out, he didn't have any interest in it because he just didn't want to go back to it again. Yeah. But one day, I was having a chat with another friend who actually did pick up Classic, and Los jumped in the channel. We were talking about our Nixia raid that day, and we were talking uh -huh. about what loot was going to drop, uh -huh. and one of us mentioned Viscadge, and Los chimed Ooh. in and reminisced. He was like, oh yeah, oh. Viscadge, that's the Nixia. I, I know where this story is going. He's going to ask the guy what, he ha what, he, what weapon he currently has equipped. I, I guarantee you that's what it's going to be. See a drop. It's the blue and red recolor of the Dalren set. Yep. I remember that was amazing back in the day. It and sure it had was. had that damage proc. Every rogue wanted one. Yep. So here's a guy who hasn't touched Classic in 15 years. Yep. He never played private servers. Yep. He doesn't keep up with Classic or any aspect of it. His Classic experience started in 2004 and ended in 2007. And yet mm -hmm. still, he remembers this weapon from 15 years ago. How could you the forget? the proc effect because, well... It's memorable. It was good damage. At this point, we both still rated in current, and he happened to get a dagger drop just a day or two before this. I asked him the name of the weapon he got, and he could not answer me. Why? You knew what it was going to be. 
Everybody knew what it was going to be. It's forgettable. Yeah, it's fucking forgettable, man. Girthlack. I mean, I probably remember, like, but yeah, I don't think you should look at me as, like, a standard of, oh, well, at least Asmongold remembers it. I remember tons of shit that I shouldn't remember. Gataku? Yeah, I mean, of course, Gataku, right? Gataku is probably one of the unique items in the game, though. And I think that's the exception and not the rule. Well, aside from maybe his age of getting the best of them. It's because yeah. the loot and current is so generic and forgettable that it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. What's the difference between this and the other 20 carbon copies that mm -hmm. you get from dungeons or world quests or loot caches? This guy can remember a one-handed sword in a game he hadn't played in 15 years. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't remember the name of the dagger mm -hmm. he got two days ago. There's no gravity to 90% of your equipment anymore because the uniqueness and fun has been balanced out of it. Yeah. We don't want people to feel like they need this weapon type and ignore all the rest. So we'll go. That's actually what happens, though, is like, obviously, I think that corruptions, uh, I know that I go back to this, right? But I think actually corruptions are really cool. Like, I, I really like stat amp corruptions. I really like things like, um, I guess it's mostly the stat amps that I like. Really? You guys don't like it? I think they're really cool. They, like, you can just, like, fucking, just, like, deep dick into one stat and just have it be, like, ridiculously powerful? I don't know, man. Like, I really think that's fun. And I like the customization aspect of it. Uh, I like all the different play styles that it can support. I don't know. I... I I think that, yeah, they're imbalanced and there's, like, bad things that come along with them. But the core idea behind them is really good. People don't like, yeah, people don't like the RNG and, like, the acquisition method. But I'm talking about the corruptions in the way that they influence your gameplay in certain ways. Like, things like Twilight Devastation is really cool. Uh, the only problem is it's just too powerful for just being a random proc. Uh, that's the issue. 90% of your damage is fun for noobs. Yeah, I get that. But, like, I, I don't know. Like, only enchants and gems, please? Well, what about reforging? Well, what about like all the other things that the game's had that are cool? What about item upgrades? Like, I don't want to have it like all the game never grow beyond classic. I just think that it should grow in a good way. Too much RNG? Well, I mean, I'm talking about stat amps. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's no RNG with that at all. Go ahead and make them all the same. We don't want people to ignore these fast weapons. So we'll yeah. just make them all have the same speed. Yep, they're all 3.6 And we don't now. want people to choose between different types of gems and match oh, socket bonuses that's so or pick stupid. a meta gem. So just remove it all and make all gems match all sockets. We don't want players to make a decision yep. to break tier set bonuses when getting the new set. You don't have to So make we're decisions. just going to remove tier sets. Fuck it, dude. Blizzard just seems so deathly afraid of the player having to make a decision. The player no longer adapts to the game. The game now adapts to the player. Items that That's actually probably one of the best way to look at it. I really like that a lot. Like I, I really, I really like that, uh, that idea. B besides that, yeah, uh, that's fucking great. I don't like how you guys make that comparison with covenants because I think that it's disingenuous. I think that the problem that people have with covenants is not being able to go back and do different things. Whereas, like in the past in the game, you were able to go back and do different things with relatively no friction. So, like, if you were a DPS warrior, you could build a tank set and you could just respect the tank whenever you wanted. Like, it's not, you don't have to sit through a two week time gate or something like that. You just go and respect immediately and you can go play what you want. It just takes more time and money. Like, that's what I like. Uh, yeah, I, I like that a lot. What you get from the literal old god of the deep, 50G the was final a two week boss time of the expansion. No, are essentially the same as the ones you get from a generic soloable world quest. Yep. And when Titanforging and corruption systems were in the game, it could be just as good. <laughs> as far as I know, though, that's going away in Shadowlands, yeah, which is, is an improvement. That's a good thing. So you got to give them credit there. It has negative effects in other ways too, because the uh -huh. loot is all over the place in Classic. There are some amazing pieces even in the early raid tiers, such as Molten Core, and yep. even when the final raid, Next Ramus, is out. Players still have a reason to go to the Molten Core. This adds replayability. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Thunder Fury is Biss for the whole expansion. Choker the Fire Lord is Biss. Uh, the shoulders from Domo for healing are pretty good. The belt gets replaced. Onslaught gets replaced by a Resuvius belt. Uh, there's a few other... Uh, yeah, Onslaught? No, Resuvius belt's better because Resuvius belt 
gives less strength than Onslaught, but it also gives 20 agility, which makes it another critical strike chance. And at that point, you have so much innate hit on your gear by using Conqueror's Legs, or maybe use Titanic Leggings, depending on like how, how effective you want to go and how much health you want to have. You have like Conqueror's Shores. You have so much like passive hit on your gear. And also because you only need 6% hit now because of the way that Heroic Strike works, uh, there's no reason to, to go for that as, at all. So BRE, I don't know. BRE is not better than Might of Menethilin anyway. It's also not better than the uh, the Claymore uh, of Unholy Might. There's just like zero way. Like maybe it's better against a Clothy in a team fight in Arathi Basin. Like that, it's so situational. And, and like I, I think against Might of Menethil, it just doesn't really show up. In a way that, in my opinion, is more healthy and natural for the game. Yeah. It seems to me that current relies on replayability in forced and awkward methods such yep. as artifact power dailies or daily quest hubs or the other 20 things with daily or weekly timers arbitrarily tacked onto them. Another problem I have with the game is a monumental amount of daily chores that it sets you on. A lot of the times it feels like you're forced into this yeah. mindless routine of grinding out dailies to feed into engagement <laughs> metrics rather than actually playing the game. That's Plus, good, dude. It's just a huge waste good. of development resources. Yeah. Rating uh, in is amazing. It's insane. The boss fights are great, and they're it's at their very peak, true. in my opinion. They're incredible. I always maintain that as far as mechanics and boss design is concerned, they do a great job. So to completely abandon raid tiers as soon as the next one releases just seems like a big waste. To me, raiding is the mainstay endgame activity for nearly every MMO in existence. So having replayability tied yeah. to that, in my opinion, feels much more natural and fun. Bring back progressive raiding? I think so many people sleep on how important that is. Hoping the turtles make it to the water for the 10,000th time. A turtle made it to the water. I like the crab one, wrong, but I don't like that one. Repetitive, but that's the name of the game for MMOs. Yeah. I'm just saying that raiding feels more like you're actually playing the game, and daily quests and all this busy work just sort of fills the time while you wait yeah. for your next raid to reset. Just look at Classic. Mm -hmm. It's a 15-year-old game, and it's as basic as it gets. Your weekly itinerary isn't grinding Azerite, or daily reputation hubs, mm -hmm. or world quests. It's doing raids that are as easy as your mom. And yet still, it's a juggernaut because that's what the whole MMORPG genre is all about. Yeah. The main point I'm getting yeah, at here, true. though, is that this that's is all true. tied to loot. The reason why these raid tiers are immediately abandoned is because the loot is so simple, everything is replaced. If everything is main stat. Exactly. And think about the things that didn't get replaced this expansion. What didn't get replaced? Font of Power. That's not simple at all. Uh, Ashvane's Razor Coral. That's not simple at all. Uh, like, the more unique items, Getaku is not simple at all. Uh, yeah, that's a, what's, it's pretty simple, right? But like overall, like they have special unique items that do cool things. I, I love that shit, man. Yeah, I, I fucking love this. Font fucking sucks, by the way. Really? I think font is cool. I, I don't really play, I, I don't play a mage, but I think the idea of it is cool. Stamina, secondary one, secondary two, and raid Yeah, a. that's it. And then everything is main stat, stamina, secondary one, secondary two, but just a little bit higher in raid yeah. B. Yeah. Why would you ever go back to raid A? I yeah. swear that Blizzard would balance chess if given the chance. You know, we've read that the pawn piece is a little undertuned, and it isn't as versatile as the other pieces, so we're giving them the ability to move in straight and diagonal directions oh unlimited just like the queen. And it's the same with the knight. Yeah. Now, they can move to other places that other pieces can. Yeah, of course But they we don't can. want players having to choose between moving their queen and moving their knight. Yeah, they can only... So we're just gonna make the knight the same as the queen too. That makes sense. It makes yeah. sense for certain genres. I think FPS games mm -hmm. are a great example. If two players are using the same gun, they better have the same fire rate, recoil, and bloom as each other, and the person with the better reaction time and aim should win, because that's where the genre shines. Well, I think actually like Warzone did a great job, uh, like kind of, they gave people the ability to have guns that did different things in Warzone, and that actually I think made the game, they gave it a lot more longevity with the loadouts and being able to customize your loadout weapons. I thought that was really fucking good. 
and the the difference is like yeah you had like things like the bruin i think was like really fucking overpowered and, and like PUBG had this issue too with its rifles where like the m4 for a long time was like just really really fucking good it's like better than all the other guns basically and so like most people would always just go for an m4 because it just had the most well-rounded outcome and that's not good but I think Warzone did a great job by allowing people to customize their loadouts and not having certain things be like ridiculously overpowered. Uh, M4 still kind of is. It is, but it was, it was like just way fucking better. Like, I, like there are some people that could play the other guns with like very, very high technical like skill level and like be better, right? With like Shroud with an AK or something like that. But for like 99% of players, like M4 was the best gun. Like fucking period. Like, and this was in PUBG. Uh, in, in Warzone, I, like, at the beginning, what was the gun that was, like, super fucking OP in Warzone that, like, everybody used? I forgot even what it was. Uh, it might have also, was it also just the M4? The Growl? Uh, maybe it was that one. I don't know. But, like, yeah, everybody fucking used it. And, like, that's what games need to stop uh, stop when it happened. Great gunplay. The, and then the M5 was skill, really good. And, of course, teamwork. Yeah. There you go. Got it right, Crooked. Right, 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 right. He's going. Thanks for the AA. <laughs> oh, shit. You're a fucking shitbag. However, Got forcing him, the same balance on an RPG, yeah. something that's so reliant on character progression and customization, exactly. is like trying to fit a square peg through a round hole. Exactly. All you end up with is a messed up peg and a messed up hole. <laughs> and that's no fun for anyone. I think the game would benefit from a respite of all of the fun being balanced out of everything. You can sum up this 20 minute video to let the kids play. This 15 year old game mm -hmm. where one class globals literally any other class yeah. every three minutes and has yeah. a loot system that's all over the place is thriving. I think it's I okay. don't think that the loot system in Classic is as dynamic as Mad Season thinks that it is. I think that the loot system in Classic is basically the same thing as in Retail. And um, I don't think loot was really interesting until like, there are very few times where loot has actually been interesting in the game. I think that loot was kind of interesting in terms of an upgrade model in, uh, what do you call it, in, nope, it's not. Wait, you think that loot is more in, is, wait, what? How is loot not boring in classic WoW? Like, I'm sorry, but it kind of is. There's like three different stats that you could get. And everything else was like just basically a checklist. I don't know. I, I really don't think so at all. Wooden Classic is awesome. It's not about it being awesome or not. It's about the diversity of items and the diversity of items being actual like diversity or just seeming diversity. Because the reality is that you don't want to have a lot of the items in the game. They're just not good. I'm I'm so confused. Retail's loot is better than classic loot. Well, I think that retail has some good items too, but overall, I mean, classic items are relatively the same thing. Yeah, I, compared to retail, I don't know. I felt like in Mists of Pandaria, you had much more upgrades that you could do on your gear, and like much more investment you can make in your gear with like gems, with like item upgrades, and and like reforging and everything, and enchants. And I guess you had enchants in classic too, right? But you had like ring enchants at that point and everything else. Like that, I thought was way cooler than just picking up one piece of gear and then just using it. So like that, that's basically it. I'm not saying that like loot in classic is bad. I'm just saying that it's not really as interesting as other things in a game. Like that's all I'm saying. Uh, TBC, yeah, TBC was was really cool too. I, I love TBC loot. Uh, it was much better than I, I don't know if it's better than classic. It might have been better than classic. The only thing that I thought was interesting about classic is like a few very minor things, like the way agility would affect critical strike chance and balancing getting agility versus crit. But the rest of like hit rating and stuff, that was usually just a balancing act. It wasn't, it, it was like pseudo interest. It was like, it, it was pseudo complexity because you actually just needed to meet this benchmark and then you could just move forward. Okay, for the enemy to take the actual damage you're dealing to them. Yeah. And I think it's okay to have more than four stats or have some classes that excel in some areas and suck in others. Like I said at the start of the video, neither ends of the spectrum are perfect. That's true. The only difference is that Classic that is, is a 15 year old game with a community who doxes each other for suggesting guild banks. So I don't want to know what'll happen if Blizzard actually changes balance. 
yeah. both have gaping flaws, and the best would be a mix of the two in my opinion. I agree. Would it be ironic to say that the best balance would be a balance between the two? Yeah. I get I kind of ranty with current true. these days, if you haven't noticed. But hopefully it comes from yeah. a place of constructiveness. The Fuck frustrations yeah, and changes I shared in this video Fuck yeah, I, I want ultimately that. feel would improve the game. The success of classic mm -hmm. shows that there's value in the game resembling more of an RPG. I'm not saying to go as far as mimicking it completely or pretending it's flawless. Yep. Just that there's a demand in the player adapting to the game instead of the game adapting to the player. Mm -hmm. I'm well aware that I've talked about this stuff before, but it needs to be said. These are issues that I feel kill the game, and as long as I continue to care about it, I'll keep bringing it up. Mm -hmm. Titan forging would still be in the game if people didn't speak up about it. That's right. Uh, I'm so glad that people stuck on Blizzard about that because I hated that shit. Bring back Wrath. I think that Wrath gear was interesting. I think BC gear. When did they normalize all of the spell, all of the different types of spell damage? Was that in Wrath? That was in that was in Wrath, I think. Like, yeah, the, the pre patch for Wrath, where where gear stopped having like shadow spell damage on it, like in Kata, what Wrath gear had shadow damage on it? I don't remember that at all. Like, yeah, what what Wrath gear did shadow damage? Greens? Oh, so just greens gear. Like, so, but there's no raid gear that did this. Okay. So that was about it. But hey, take it for what it is. At the end of the day, it's just another Neckbeard's opinion. Yeah, that spell power? Yeah, I like spell power. This is a good video. Farewell for Did now, I miss Jennifer? Morphe. No, we're about to do Jennifer now. We hope you enjoy uh, it. Apparently video. just got released. And, uh, or it just got Soon. discovered, so we're going to do that. Yes, we are about to do the, uh, we're about to do Jennifer. It's a cat, by the way. We're going to do the cat. Uh, I feel everyone thinks Blizzard should adapt to the game. When our Blizzard so new, it changes the game, everyone loses their mind. Well, that's like you say, let the kids play, and everybody agrees with it. But then you say, let the kids play with knives, and people say, wait a minute, let's not do that. Because it's actually not as simple as just a binary, just, oh, well, because we're doing this thing, then players should automatically adapt to it. There's more nuance to the conversation than just everything Blizzard does is right or wrong. Uh, that's what it comes down to. Uh, th that's what my opinion is. Yeah, it's a blanket statement, exactly. That, that's what I'm really trying to say. Um, but regardless, I uh, I do think that gear in Classic, it, it's it's more interesting probably than most of the gear in Retail. I think Retail does have its share of interesting and cool pieces of gear, like the things that you got from the uh, like the Crucible of Storms that gave you different effects, and they, they gave you cool little things like that that you could do too. So I think that really just like looking at what made Classic gear interesting and then trying to add a few more stats and things to balance would probably make it cooler than what we have now because like right now it's like four stats and that's it that's it and it's just got to be more interesting than that man 